This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens, uh, here on thinktechhawaii.com, broadcasting live right now, 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And on YouTube right after this, and of course, we have a podcast, Think Tech Hawaii on uh, Apple iTunes. Uh, today, we're going to keep going with our series, uh, How to Be a Hacker. And uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> how to be a hacker. Uh, this is part uh, part two, I believe. Uh, part one didn't go so well, so we're gonna go with part two. Part one was the DEF CON. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna we're gonna escalate this a little bit. We're gonna go into the phase one of uh, an attack phase. Uh, this is reconnaissance, mm, and we're gonna look at uh, open source uh, intelligence. Uh, with me here today, Aki. Okay? Andrew, the security guy, Andrew, once again. Andrew, the security guy's here. I'm being Andrew hacked Lang. as we speak, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for coming. No worries. Thanks right. for having me, brother. All right. Welcome back. We're going to do, uh, we're gonna do some, you mentioned the kill chain. You should describe that to our chain, listeners now, now that you said well, that. It, Hewlett Packard developed it, right? It was a way to describe, I think, the, uh, the events that lead up to uh, invasion, the events that, uh, I think they got six or seven steps, seven steps? Well, there, there's seven major steps, yeah. but the, the kill chain is usually what uh, someone might do. Now, here's what we do in pen testing. We go to the uh, final outcome. This is what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. How are we going to achieve that? Okay. There could be seven different hacks to get into a computer, sure. and it, it could be social. It could be uh, access control. It could be several other hacks in through IIS or whatever. And we work back, how are we going to achieve those attacks? Right. There could be several different ways to get that information to achieve that attack. Like an access control list, I might be password mm -hmm. guessing. I might try to access that the SAM on the on the actual local machine. How am I going to get mm -hmm. that? Right. Okay. So either physically or electronically, or whatever. right. Right. So there's several ways for each path, but the ultimate goal is I'm getting that machine. Here's all the ways I can do it, mm -hmm. and I work my way backwards from what do I need to do first, and it always starts with recon. Recon. Is recon, nice. and the cheapest and easiest way to go right from the bat, uh, right from the, the get go, is uh, something like social media. Oh. You do open source resource, you just go to the internet. Or you just call them and ask them questions. Oh, and so many people just <laughs> answer questions. Hey, this is your IT team. What was your password? <laughs> <laughs> How sad that that works, right? Uh, but it does. I've uh, seen it demonstrated. It, it works. works. It just, it's the saddest thing. You Pete, know? It's funny why people will give up. Do you think that's, are they leveraging just that, that, that trusting human nature that people have? You want to trust. Yeah, or, or, or yeah. people just, I mean, even in our industry, like IT people should always be aware that this is going on, right? Right. And they take the bait. Well, you let your guard down. Yeah. You, you got, you're preoccupied, you got several other things going on, mm. you know, you got a project list you got to knock out for that day. If someone's on the phone, mm. you might be typing and talking at the same time, you're not thinking. I think some of it's resource related. Like, if I say, what's your bank account number? That gets your attention, right? That's right. But if I say, what's the, what's the password to that server? You don't really own it, it's the company server. Do you really? Are you that engaged? Who do you, who's this, Matt? Oh, yeah, Matt, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. from that party. I don't know, but I, I think I know where it's kept. <laughs> Let me break open that password file, and I'll, and I'll tell you really quick, just wow. to get you off my phone. What's right? that IP address again? <laughs> That's wow. the most dangerous, right? So I guess get some statistics. Sure. Pew Research Center came up with a stat recently. 65% okay. of adults in the U.S. use social media. That even seems maybe low. That seems low. That's 65% that's a, will admit it. That, that's right, and that's conservative. Yeah, and those right? are the ones that actually know how to use it. There's all the ones that, that are, you know, they got an account sitting there. They never change the default password. It's just hacked. It's just, and it's, it's wide open. Yeah, like, or they, you know, worse, they share it with their partner. Yeah. Right, and so they, they, two or three of them using it. Right. Or the whole family. <laughs> Can you just post stuff on my LinkedIn for yeah, me? Yeah, that's right. Or yeah. my, what is it, Facebook or whatever? My Facebook. Facebook. Facebook, I oh. think, used to be one of the, the worst. Right now, I am considering LinkedIn one of the most open places. That is a very trusting environment. You put up everything about yourself and mm. your, your work situation, but you match up things with like your certifications mm. and what you do for the company. Mm. And I, as a hacker now know, oh, well, you're an MCSC and you do IIS. Well, mm. guess what kind of servers you have? Mm -hmm. I, I pretty much know I'm gonna attack Windows, right? Sure. So when I go into to recon and footprint, I'm gonna be looking for Windows servers. Mm -hmm. that, that's a big problem. What I wanted to talk about is one of the biggest things that happens on Facebook right now is people post pictures ah, way too often. Oversharing. Oversharing. And you might think it's completely innocuous. And the mm. story I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to show the pictures, of course, because that would be the wrong. whole world would have the whole them. world would they have them right. anyway. But. I'm not going to participate in that <laughs> lunacy. But this is a person, she was, she's a great person. She fixed her floor. 
Uh, she put it in, in, her, house. in her house. Okay, right? so this is her home. This is her home. Took and she pictures, posted huh? pictures of her new floor. And it's beautiful. Sure. And then I started taking a close look at the sure. pictures. What's in the background? What's in the background? Exactly. Ah, I and love it. It's terrible. So the, the first thing I spotted was she's got old school windows with the big iron level that you, you could just put a credit card in there and pop it open. Nah, right? You can see those from the from the pictures, right, when you expand right. it. So, you okay. can just expand it with a high this resolution This is all part photos. of the recon, by the way. Dave, <laughs> Dave is coming to your house. You better be careful. And she had this posted to friends of friends. So anybody oh, that's oh, a friend wow. of her friend can see everything on her website, right? Okay. So it may not be public, but tens of thousands of people have access to this. So who mm. knows? What else who did you see? So, so wind, saw the window latches, I right? could also see the door locks. Were there, um, did you notice, were there like security, like like alarm, like magnet con magnetic contacts no on magnetic the windows or anything? Contacts. As a matter of fact, the worst part about the windows and the doors was I could see foliage everywhere. Oh, outside. So there was absolutely 100% privacy. If you're breaking in a window, no one's looking at you. You can't hide. You can't, you can hide. Yeah, that privacy, uh, privacy fence, privacy shrub has a, that additional problem. That's a drawback. That comes with it, you know, yeah. if you're not able to monitor that area, especially if it's not lit or whatever. So right. it's a, yeah, yeah. it's called and a hiding place. No cameras that I could see outside. Yeah. And there were some, some views I could see outside the house. Uh, door oh, locks, really? primitive. Oh. The old uh, school door locks, probably sure. four pin, five pin at the most, uh -huh. you know, 16, 17 seconds. Or the you little, know. or just the little gun, right? Or the little, you, yeah, you the could little. bump it, right? Sure. But um, or just jimmy it. Some of those are just so old, right? Wow. And but the the worst part was in the background, I could see some of her networking components. Oh. So I could see Amazon like, Echo. Uh, out. Oh, okay. Shit and there's working. a LinkedIn router hanging on the wall. And when you zoom it up, this high res photo, you can see the model number of the LinkedIn router. <laughs> Did she have that IP address on it? No. <laughs> you know, some people have that with the right. password. You know, right. Yeah, the password like, hanging on it. No. Like, really? No, but, you know, you can go to Showdown, get the sure. get the, the, model uh, the credentials, uh, uh, the default credentials. And uh, I did not try them, but I warned her, if you had not changed this, you need to go change that. Mm -hmm. And she thanked me, so I think. Well, and some of them have a back door, depending on who it was. A Netgear, Link, there's a bunch of them that haven't patched all that, right? <laughs> so there's no, you know, they, you know, that's a problem, right? It is a problem. And it, it's consumer grade. So sure, there's, sure. there's not a lot of protection there. But you can see all that. As a matter of fact, there were so many pictures of her house, I could get the exact floor layout. And I knew exactly the, the diagram of the house. I could draw a picture of the house's wow. layout. And, and also, the isn't there the... Um don't images have a their the location the, the geotag, geotag. geotag so if, if i download so you the image, know where it is i know exactly where it is ah, um as a matter of fact the closer you live to a uh, an urban zone where there's more cell towers the geotags are ma that much more accurate oh, wow. so then if you say you had a business you were taking photos of this really cool office that you have and you posted those on your company website i could download the get the geotag and i could see where you were standing in relationship to another picture oh. so i could map the oh, geocode yes. so now i really do have exact layout because i know what angle you were taking from and where you were I mean, standing when you took that, that picture so i from a physical security standpoint posting photos online is a bad idea bad idea bad idea you know take it outdoors take a picture <laughs> of fluffy running in the forest yeah. Have a neutral background. All those indoor remodeling. And oh, what do we call that? In law enforcement, uh, we call that, uh, you got to have a clean backdrop. Mm -hmm. You know, take a shot unless, you know, no one's going to get hurt. Your bullet's going to be safe sure. if it misses, right? So, same with a photo. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a clean backdrop. Don't just wow. take a photo. So, you recon this person. Yeah. You, you're, you're trying to, you know, you but just by going to LinkedIn, because if, if you say you can't get to them at their office, you can possibly get to them at home. So sure. learning about what they have that's attackable at home might be much simpler than trying to attack them at their office. And that's one of the that's the one of the main attacker uh, pathways, right? You can't attack the DoD, so you small you get the small vendor with almost no security. Like me. No, you're you're a pretty big you're a pretty big vendor. No, I'm a little small <laughs> vendor. Trust me, we got like twenty some people. We're small. So the guys that uh, supply like nuts and bolts and screws to to the DoD mm -hmm. have a path a network path to the DoD for reporting purposes, and if you can hack that you can have an easier path into the Department of Defense. Sure. Uh, of course, it's not the easiest because what is the Office of Professional Management fell victim to a hack. Uh, duh. And it was, yeah, they're the people that handle security clearances, by the way. So it wasn't them, though. It was their subcontractors, actually. I did not know that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. tell so me about a, this. It was a couple of their, so it was, and, and so the guys had it, had a breach that they acknowledged that they had, so they actually lost the contract to some other guys that got breached, the other team got breached. <laughs> I used to have a slide of it, I forget the name of the two companies, but it was oh, two, man. two of the subcontractors that do all that background check work for OPM. That Case lost in all point, of, lost go my, for the little fish, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was in there too. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I'm going to find all my data online. And it's, well, that's Tom Feinling who was here. He can look you right up. Oh, I, I am almost afraid to yeah. ask them because they're going to dig up stuff about when I was in a fraternity. Well, it's, it's out there though. I mean, you know, <laughs> you want to know what's there. They, what they can tell is just someone's selling it and using it. That's what's important. So other places you can get um, mm. open source about um, open source intelligence about companies um, on job sites. Mm -hmm. If jo if companies post too much about what they want someone to do, interesting. We're hiring a project manager for cybersecurity. We're hiring a project mm -hmm. manager for IT infrastructure. We're hiring a project manager for AWS cloud environment. Okay. Right, and then they go through a list of specific skill sets that you might need: SAP, mm -hmm. IIS. Mm -hmm. You know, go down this list of different skill sets, and you can map together what their infrastructure is. SAP, okay, they got some Linux here, they got some Apache running. IIS, they got Microsoft servers and they, they're hosting a website. You know what to look for, mm -hmm. so you're filling in your reconnaissance map so you know what to attack with. So when the time comes, you know exactly what server, exactly what patch level that you're footprinting. You open something like Multigo, or better yet, sorry, Metasploit, and all mm -hmm. those attacks are specific to that server. They're built for it. And they're built for it. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't patched everything up to the minute, that's yeah. going to work perfectly. And that, that lowers your time in there looking around, right? Because right. the longer you're there, the easier or the more opportunity they have to detect you doing things. Right, so you transparency get in decreases. quickly, right. have a very targeted, or open a very targeted tool, see if it'll go. Yeah. <laughs> you just want that C prompt, don't you? Yeah, you want the, you want the command line. So if you get the <coughs> command line, you can create new users, mm -hmm. uh, lock old users out. And uh, this, this can be kind of scary. So LinkedIn, I think, and job sites in general are a hmm. huge hole. So it's interesting for people, you know, I mean, I, I think we, you know, because that's used as that sort of like recruiting, right? Everybody, that's, that's, they have all that stuff up there. And people are, I see people advertising for jobs now, just like you're saying, with a lot of that data there, you know, so they're kind of defining their environment right there on LinkedIn as well. So I've fallen victim to uh, something else on, on LinkedIn, which is kind of tragic. Uh, you put your schools up there. Yeah. And they have a specific place you can put uh, the courses you've taken. Oh. So, of course, if you, if you want to do a spear phishing attack on somebody, mm -hmm. you'd say, hey, we took this project management course together at HPU. Yeah. Do you remember me? Uh, I wasn't on your team, but we got along, we had a beer. Yeah. And you might not remember, but you respond. And they got you. Mm. You know, they start a dialogue and they'll mm. just start drilling. Sure. You know, what did you do last summer? Here's what I did. And they'll get more and more information about it. The more people know, the easier it is to get in, not just yeah, physically, but they share that familiarity, right? So right. feigned or not, you know, and that's a that's a easy to victimize, I guess, because we all want to we all want to bring some of that history forward with us, or we don't want to admit that we don't. I don't remember you. Oh yeah, I don't know. No, we, we had we a couple be nice. beers. Remember, you're like, oh, I don't remember you. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> I don't think I'd say that. I'd, I'd want to be nice, you know. <laughs> That's what I mean. You're not you, gonna, you yeah. innately want to be uh, reasonable yeah. and nice with somebody. But it's not just schools, though. You know, mm -hmm. if you put your volunteer experience on there, sure, you're susceptible. And, and they also know where to find you, right? So if you're if you're associating with certain things, if like mine, I'm sure it has uh, many of the uh, like my Rotary Club, for example. So they could come and try to hack me in my Rotary Club. You never know. Right, so they know where you're going to be. PMI Honolulu. Mm -hmm. I'm part of the chapter, so yeah. if I, if so I go frequent to those, they know where probably I'm going to park. They know where I'm going to be walking back and forth. They know when I'm not home. Yeah, you think yeah. they'd come and like blow up our infraguard meeting? <laughs> <laughs> that would be worrisome. No, that would that That's would just kind of cement it. Come, <laughs> maybe. Like, so, is cybersecurity important? Well, they just blew up an infraguard meeting, so yeah, I think cybersecurity. <laughs> It's probably with thirty or forty of us at a pop in Hawaii. That'd be a, that'd be a good population. Hawaii is amazing right now for IT. Where uh, unemployment for IT is under one percent, unemployment wow. for cyber is zero. And then so so this this recon stuff that we're talking about are there are there a lot of folks doing that? Are you aware? I know I know you've got a team that does some of that, and your students. Not a lot do of people want to admit it. That's the is problem. That right? yeah. <laughs> they don't want to be like I couldn't find a guest for this show on open source intelligence because no one wants to admit, yeah, this is what I do mm, for a living, right? I see. It's just great for private investigative work. Sure, and I mean, it's called research, right? This is research. This is open source research. You know right? exactly. That's that's kind of how it's termed today. Anyway, it's how you, you saw the guys at Black Hat and Def Con all talking about this is this is couched as research. So we're gonna take a break, really yeah. quick. Uh, we're gonna go pay some bills. We're gonna be right back with the Cyber Underground, and we're gonna discuss how you get some of these tools for free. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. 
right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. But grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said. What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push! Oh, Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Hey, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. You are watching the Cyber Underground with Professor Dave. I'm Andrew, the security guy, and you might even be listening to us on our podcast. I don't know. But anyway, I, gotta, I get asked all the time about passwords. And should we change them all the time? Should we not change them? How do we do that? What do you use? Blah, 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 right? So I got some advice for you. Check out this thing called Diceware. Um, Diceware is this idea of introducing uh, uh, so much chance into a, a password phrase that it is highly immune to being discovered or, or used against you. So basically you're going to take two regular dice, uh, you're going to roll them and you're going to come up with some numbers right each time and then say you roll them five times, that number is going to correspond to a word. So you're going to write that word down. You're going to do this, let's just say seven times. So seven nonsensical words that don't mean anything and those words are going to be your passphrase. That thing is, is, takes a couple hundred years to hack. So try out Diceware or passwords. All right? That's all I, I got. For I you love today. that. That's great. All right, Dave. I would add, you know, uh, Jeff Milford, president of ISC Square, mm -hmm. was here with us, and uh, he said, yeah, do that and then add other languages. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Instead I love of house, put casa, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, w instead of forbidden, put verboten, you know, mm -hmm. add some German in there. That, that's a great one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, I went digging around in, in the Diceware, and it's got enough, uh, enough. It's good. So about seven of those words is fine. The tricks that they're going to, is figuring out how to remember those seven. But seven of anything, you can't. That's why phone numbers are seven numbers. And the brain seems to be able to deal with seven. Americans. Yeah. In Europe, American it's brain. eight and more. Is it? And eight to ten, actually. Can they yeah. remember it? Well, look at, look at their phone numbers. They have a, a two-digit country code, and they have two sections. I don't think I know anybody over there. Oh, oh get, get out. you got to get out. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're like 1808 where they're like 035 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so or 35. Yeah, yeah, try it. So they, okay. they have longer numbers to memorize. I think uh, they're just inherently smarter. We're stupid, Americans. We got dumbed down. I blame it on Windows. <laughs> you know what? That was the downfall right there. The mouse. The yeah, mouse as soon as we had. The command yeah. line away. <laughs> and let, let's talk because this next tool you're going to talk about yeah, is okay, yeah. a let's powerful, talk about but, you know, it doesn't use a mouse. So let's talk about this. Um, we have our regular computer, and we don't want to mess it up, but we do want to do some research. So how do we do research with another computer on our computer so we don't mess up our computer? A Windows version of what? Well, we can do anything we want when we virtualize. Yes. We, this is our host machine. We want to put a guest machine on it. Yeah. So my Mac can run a, a guest operating system of Windows, of Linux, of another Mac, yep. and if it blows up, it's okay. okay. I delete it, I recover it from a file, I'm up and running in a couple of minutes, I don't have to do a reinstall or anything. So virtualization software mm -hmm. is really the future of, of everything, really. Yeah. That's how we do cloud environments, right? We virtualize servers, and that's why we can bring them up and take them down, and we can manage resources so much better. We don't have this big clunky thing. We got one clunky thing, but it represents 20 virtual like 50 things. 50 computers. Right, or 50 computers. So and you can do this at home. This, yes, and this is the best way to do things if you're going to do research or, or especially programming because mm -hmm. you don't want to mess up your system, right? <laughs> uh, so you get some parallelization, uh, virtualization software. On Mac, it would be Parallels. But in every operating system, you have uh, Oracle's VBox, which mm -hmm. is free. Mm -hmm. uh, you have VMware, which is a paid-for thing, but students get that free. Okay. Um, or you can use uh, the Microsoft... 
Hyper-V, Hyper -V, yeah. right, that comes Which with Which is it. what's on here. So, and that, and that will parse out uh, threads in your processor, section off memory, and let you use a little bit of your physical machine to do this guest operating system. So you're safe, you have your little bubble you can do something in, and you can isolate that from the rest of your machine. So the best tool we can get to do security research is a version of Linux called Kali. Kali Linux. K-A-L-I, I believe actually that's a god. In is Hindu right? religion, yes, it is. Okay. And I don't know what it's named after. Yeah, Kali is, uh, I believe, it got a I know death it's or something. I, it's, I know it's massive when you look at the library of tools it comes with. Uh, that's right. So Kali comes preloaded with all these great tools, not just hacking tools, but great recon tools. Mm -hmm. And one of the great recon tools it comes with is something called Maltigo. Maltigo. Okay. Ma or, I, don't I, know I think this. you pronounce it Maltigo because it's supposed to be malware. Okay. Maltigo. So uh, this this can be paid or free. The free versions, the community versions, a little pared down, but it's still very effective. And then you can pay for a more intensive tool for penetration testing. If that's your career, you probably want to pay for that. Uh, but Maltigo will allow you to drag in a name of, say, a domain, a website's name or a domain of a company, okay. and click go and it goes and finds all the connections on the internet having to do with that domain. Ooh. It'll come back with all the email addresses, all the associated websites, names, phone numbers. It, it, it's Port an list. extraordinary amount. And it puts it in a Did diagram it? for you, so you know okay. where the connections are, what's connected to who, yeah, who's connected by, to how, so is it like the service, like, like via port 80 or port... Or it comes back with a lot of information like that. Okay. It's, it's pretty scary, actually, all the things it can come back with. But that's just one of the tools in Kali Linux. And that maps out from the internet, so that's all the publicly exposed links right. this to is all, IBM.com. And nobody can be mad at you because this is totally legal. It's completely upfront. They put the information out there. Okay. And some of the sad parts is people can complain, but when you, when you own a company, you put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You make a company website. You put a photo of your lobby. You put um, uh, pictures of, of your your C level people because you want people to know you're you're not just you know some company from the Bahamas trying to make a couple of bucks laundering money, right? Yeah. You're real. So you put real people on there. You put a contact email for for mm -hmm. uh, service and support. Yeah. I mean, you really want to you want to make yourself friendly and accessible. But on the other hand, it's information people can use against you. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example, um, and I'm not going to tell you where I got this because, again, the picture would get me in trouble, but it was a picture of the lobby of the company. And I noticed a couple things right away. If you, of course, it was high resolution, so I zoomed in. I could see that the front door lock did not have a four-pin keypad, but every place inside the lobby, once you're in, did, okay. except for one door and was right behind the secretary. Mm. So there's your way in. Uh, another thing, I, I could see the bottled water company. There's mm. a bottle of water, you know, the bottle yeah, of water. Love, the okay. stand. I won't say the name, but yeah. And, yeah, okay. so you can see I'll the bottle of water. So if I wanted to fake a delivery, I could, I could mm -hmm. do that. I could see packages that would had already been delivered on the desk where the receptionist mm. was, right? I could see FedEx and UPS. So I could imitate any one of those vendors, including DHL. And you definitely know. get in the front door. Right. And get so to the receptionist. There's a good way to, to talk your way in, sure. right? Um, I could see the kind of people that walked in there. Uh, they were dressed in a variety of different ways. So I would not stand out if I walked in in tennis shoes and jeans. Mm -hmm. It's not like, uh, I guess, Washington, D.C., when you want to walk in there in a, a nice wool suit and, you know, fancy shoes. Mm -hmm. You can blend in in just about any environment. So all these things from one picture, mm -hmm. does that scare you? Uh, no. Because you've got I, a company and you got to put pictures out there. I absolutely understand. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, this is a piece of things that I think people need to think about. I mean, you've, we haven't been to our, our office, but I have a man trap. Like, honestly, you can't, first of all, you can't get in the door, but even if you do, you're trapped in that room. Describe the man trap for us, because that's an interesting Yeah, concept. so it, it requires access control mm -hmm. uh, to get into that room. Into the so it's just a small vestibule. So right? it's it's more like a little hallway with two doors. Yeah, so it's, a, it's yeah. probably eight by six by eight or something, fifty square feet. Something but you like got to get in the first door. And yeah, that's still there's an intercom sealed, outside. Right? So if you don't have an access card, you you know you cannot get into the into the, the that room anyway. But say someone followed someone in, yeah, right, Try, trying to force their way in or whatever, right? They still can't get anywhere. There's a window there that you have to talk to my receptionist. If someone forces their way in, they have an exit out the back. So they don't have to stay there. Say someone wanted to start shooting through that little, you know, the window with the hole in it, for example. They can get away. Yeah, so you've got, a, you've got a, a, a way to isolate yourself or at least slow this person down, right? 
So the other, there's, a, there's two other doors that leave that vestibule. You can go back outside or you can go into the conference room or you can go in the hallway, but those also have access control. And they're, you know, they're heavy duty fire doors, right? So they're not, you know, you, you could probably break them open eventually, but it's not gonna be instantaneous, you know, unless you're a really big guy, you're one of these 300 pound dudes that can hit the door hard. Then you need a really heavy man trap. Yeah, and so I mean, you might start <laughs> shooting, you're gonna make noise, whatever you do, you're going to, ca you know, call the people are gonna know, wow, something's wrong and then they're gonna hopefully egress before something bad happens. And that's what you, you do physical security with your company. Sure. So you gotta think about all these things. And what, it's, a, it's a piece of the puzzle, because say, say you saw a picture of my, my or you would think, wow, I could, I could just walk right up to the, the receptionist. But when you showed up at the door, all of a sudden you'd be, you would encounter all this physical security that would stop you. Right, so oh, one of the other things I saw in that picture I was talking about in yeah. the lobby was they had a camera there, like they could take ID photos of people. Oh, maybe to make a, um, uh, to, to make a little badge. visitor badge or whatever, mm -hmm. but it was plugged into a USB port. Mm -hmm. It was a USB camera. I knew it was. So obviously, mm -hmm. the receptionist has a computer with active USB ports. Mm -hmm. So you could be one of the guys walking in. Hey, That's I nice. need this thing printed. Could you just uh, take yeah. this off my USB drive and yeah. print this for me? And then you're in the network. Yeah. So all this from a picture, one picture on your website. Just trying to be nice. Uh, so folks out there. Uh, be careful what you take a picture of. Get a clean backdrop and make sure maybe you run a, that picture you're going to put on the web. Run it by somebody like us. Otherwise, somebody not like us but with our skill sets <laughs> could do something terrible to you. Yeah, showing off your, showing off your new active areas, you know, needs, needs to probably, have, probably should have some little, little bit of insight. I really didn't consider uh. the amount of data that's available. Do you, you remember that we used, to, we used to show, like you used to walk in some companies and their computer room was right behind the reception. Oh yeah, so they were like showing wall. it off, yeah. They, they want to show off their ENIAC or whatever they had. Yeah, that, yeah. Windows-sized computer. That was, they were huge back then. Right? Yeah, and today that's just a, a, a window in. That's another way in. Yeah, it, and I think it's, it's great that people don't have these massive data centers anymore. They're trusting it to data centers like Amazon, which have multiple locations, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to find those data centers. Um, it's it, difficult to pinpoint on the map where that data center mm -hmm. is. And it's almost impossible to pinpoint any kind of floor layout. Yeah, they're they're heavily protected. So yeah, we, we do some of that work. That's good. They're, they're, and they're difficult to get into. And you never see pictures of them. Uh, <laughs> actually, I guess not. You know, and uh, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, if you do, it's a big, it's like a wall of servers. Like, what, it just looks. Yeah, so, it could be anywhere. Yeah, right? it could yeah. be anywhere. You know, it's like, is that Dell or what is that? You know. So, open source intelligence to review. You can do it if you virtualize on your computer, but you don't need to. You can do this. You can download Maltigo or these open source. Oh, we're going to cover uh, Wireshark. Next week? Next week, okay. we're going to cover Wireshark. Uh, you and Hal will be going over that. I won't okay. be here. But that's another free tool. Maltigo is free. Um, and you can uh, virtualize a computer on your computer so you can keep yourself safe while you do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I suggested you. Um, go to some of these, uh, just go to Google. But, but, but do remember that that traffic is trackable. Yeah. So don't <laughs> think you're just out there without the ability for people to forensically see where you went and what you did if you don't know what you're doing especially. Right? Good point. Every place you go don't, is trackable. Yeah, don't load up that tool and start hacking into your neighbor's little company or your neighborhood laundromat or something just because you can. Yeah, you're not That's invisible. That's illegal. You're never invisible. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for coming back here and uh, spending some time with us on the Cyber Underground. I uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, next episode, Hal, uh, our professor. Of, professor uh, Hal. Professor Hal. And Andrew, the security guy, will be covering wires Shark. It's an open source uh, packet analysis tool. It's uh, extremely interesting. Hope to see you then. Until then, stay safe.